grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Welcome to Morning Prayer. My name is Tim Brumfield, Director of Music Ministries, Organist and Choir Master here at St. Gregory's Episcopal Church in beautiful downtown Boca Raton, Florida. Thank you so much for welcoming me and St. Gregory's into your home this morning. I'm going to adjust my mic just a little bit. There we go. Thank you once again for being with me this morning. If you'd like to follow along, I'm in the Book of Common Prayer on page 80. Let us begin. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His faithfulness endures from age to age. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 47. It's found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 650. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a cry of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is the great King over all the earth. He subdues the people under us and the nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth, sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations, God sits upon his holy throne. The nobles of the peoples have gathered together and the people of the God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, for he is highly exalted. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14, verses 1 through 18. At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went into the Jewish synagogue and spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks became believers. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers so they remained for a long time 
speaking boldly for the Lord, who testified to the word of his grace by granting signs and wonders to be done through them. But the residents of the city were divided, some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. And when an attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to mistreat them and to stone them, the apostles learned of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia, and to the surrounding country. And there they continued proclaiming the good news. In Lystra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet and had never walked, for he had been crippled from birth. When he listened to Paul as he was speaking, Paul looked at him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said in a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. And the man sprang up and began to walk when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in Lyconian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates. He and the crowds wanted to offer sacrifice. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their clothes and rushed, around in the, rushed out into the crowd shouting, friends, why are you doing this? We are mortals just like you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to follow their own ways, yet he has not left himself without a witness in doing good, giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, and filling you with food and your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the crowd from offering sacrifice to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next lesson is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 10, verses 31 through 42. When the Jews took up stones again to stone him, Jesus replied, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these are you going to stone me? The Jews answered, it is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, though only human being, are making yourself God. Jesus answered, Is it not written in your law? I said, You are gods. If those to whom the word of God came were called gods, and the scripture cannot be annulled, can you say that the one whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world is blaspheming those because I said, I am God's Son? If I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Then they tried to arrest him again, but he escaped from their hands. He went away again across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing earlier, and he remained there. Many came to him, and they were saying, John performed no sign, but everything that John said about this man was true. And many believed in him. The word the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We now meditate on the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now come to that time of offering our own prayers of thanksgivings and intercessions. We pray for all those on our prayer list today, and I invite you to share any prayer request or concerns which you may have. We pray for David and Elias, for Susan, for Melissa, For Lynn and Tony and John and Angela and John. For 
for Tim and Alv and for Don and Joanne, for all those who may be in a nursing home, rehab center, for those in the hospital, for those who may be undergoing a medical procedure of some kind, for those undergoing cancer treatment, for those who may be suffering from mental illness, for those dealing with alcohol or substance abuse. We pray for those who may have lost a loved one, for the Ward family, for the Egmont family. We pray for peace on earth, for an end to wars around the world between Israel and Palestine, between Russia and Ukraine, in Haiti. And we pray for all those in harm's way. We pray for the homeless, the destitute, the hungry, the unemployed. We pray for this nation and its leaders for all the leaders around the world, that divisions will cease, divisive ways may be replaced with love and understanding. We pray for this church and its many ministries, for Father Sherman and his family, and for our entire staff. May St. Gregory's continue to be a beacon of light and hope here in South Florida and throughout the world. We ask blessings for those who are returning back to school, for the teachers and students and parents. And we rejoice today with all those who are celebrating birthdays or some other milestone in their life. And now, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Well, once again, welcome to Morning Prayer. My name is Tim Brumfield, Director of Music Ministries, Organist and Choir Master here at St. Gregory's Episcopal Church in beautiful downtown Boca Raton, Florida. Thank you so much for making St. Gregory's and me a part of your day today. I'm coming to you via a recorded broadcast I am still out of the country, and I'll be returning to you live in the morning. Once again, thank you so much for being with me. If you're looking for a church home, you found it. We worship on Sundays at 8 and 10 o'clock. The 10 o'clock features music with uh, this coming Sunday um, will be uh, the choir returns, believe it or not. It's finally here, September 15th is when our first Sunday back with the choir, so I'm really looking forward to it. Our first rehearsal is this Thursday, September 12th. And if you are interested in either the children's choir or adult choir, please contact me. I would love to talk to you further about it. So go out, make it a wonderful day today. Be the light in someone else's life. Smile, it really does you and everyone around you so much good. Be the light in someone else's life. Be the light in the world. Do something wonderful for someone without them even knowing it. 
Take care. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Thank you.